So hi everybody, welcome back. Um, okay, we're going to talk about how to build mazes. Uh, first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. Who am I? I'm Juno Salviati, uh, co-leader of GDG Rome, Microsoft MVP and VTM ambassador. Currently, I'm a solution architect and uh, here you can see my references in case you just want to keep in touch uh, with me. on Twitter, and uh, also you can see here my Medium page where I sometimes do blog posts, and uh, in fact what I like to do is, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, especially what I love to do is maybe to contribute to technical communities and uh, do side projects, and you can find them there. So first let's define what is a maze. A maze is a path or a collection of paths, typically from an entrance to a goal, according at least at to Wikipedia, and uh, I think that everybody knows uh, why the maze has been built for it. It uh, was a very, very special prize honor for uh, a monstrous uh, being, which was the Minotaur and uh, King Minos of Crete, uh, ordered Daedalus uh, to construct uh, the maze. So when we talk about mazes, uh, uh, we have to differentiate uh, uh, about two kinds of mazes, uh, the Merticors and one which is uh, the one with path and branches, maybe the one you find of the magazine, and the unicorns is one, which are uh, this one on the right, and maybe you can find this in uh, medieval cathedrals uh, because it was associated with some kind of uh, spiritual path. Uh, okay, now we're going to cover some algorithm to generate mazes, and we are going to be very fast here because I want to maybe approach other more interesting technologies to build mazes. We are going uh, only to see binary tree and uh, Aldous brother uh, and yeah Aldous brother uh, first one uh, uh, yeah it will be about tossing a coin uh, and the other one uh, about random walker and okay uh, those are just a subset of algorithm to generate mazes with different texture and we are going to add enter and exit uh, at the very very end. Uh, okay, how does binary tree work? You are going to choose a random cell, for example, the upper left cell, and then you are going to toss a coin in every cell. And if uh, it comes up head, you are going to go north. Otherwise, uh, if it comes up tails, you are going to go hest and carve a passage. And uh, what is important is that you have to pick tosses uh, in order to avoid the digging made, uh, may, maybe outside the maze. And uh, the result, you can see it there. They are very, very peculiar because you can see that there are some kind of corridors uh, going through the northern and the eastern, uh, um, the eastern side of these mazes. And there is uh, this frame which is very, very specific for this kind of uh, algorithm output. If we try to play with probabilities, uh, what it happens is that uh, if P is major than uh, 0.5, then, the, then we, have, um, we are going to have a majority of horizontal corridors, and otherwise we are going to have a majority of vertical corridors. And this is a direct consequence uh, about how the carving uh, is going to work uh, with this kind of algorithm. Hadus Brothers uh, is a little bit different because it's a random walker algorithm. Uh, so you have a traveler, which uh, of course uh, randomly is going to randomly choose uh, the next step uh, to do. And so what we do is to choose a random cell, no matter which uh, one is just okay. And uh, until there are no cell left to visit, uh, then uh, we are about to choose a random allowed direction. Avoiding, of course, the border walls, uh, and if the chosen cell has not been visited, uh, we are going to dig <laughs> toward that cell and go there. Otherwise, we just go there. And this is the result. Uh, it's uh, a maze with a very, very different uh, texture. Uh, there are no bias here, so we don't have those corridors. Uh, it's very, very nice to see and maybe cleaner. What we can do is maybe try to play a bit with mazes uh, in order to uh, use bitmaps uh, to produce maze uh, with the shape of some kind of uh, images that we like. And uh, we have to be careful here because we can only choose a random walker algorithm. For example, Eldos Brothers, which we saw before, or Wilson's. Um, and we have to be careful about uh, parachuting the workers inside the maze uh, 
because otherwise uh, uh, maybe we, uh, we aren't able uh, uh, to begin the algorithm neither because we are not going to be able to choose uh, a candidate cells to be carved. Uh, the reason why we have to choose a random walker algorithm um, is related to the fact that uh, one or zero here uh, are going to be used to define the mask, so uh, we can't use them as value to decide uh, the toss of a coin. And uh, another very important point is that that bit mask should be connected, so we shouldn't have no highlands to keep things uh, easier, because otherwise uh, the algorithm could get stuck because we keep on uh, having uh, unconnected cells to be visited. And these are some of the results. So here I applied the algorithm <laughs> to uh, maybe a very famous uh, Tyrannosaur and uh, the, a very famous ghost and uh, a little way. So going further with this kind of exploration, we can try to connect mazes and cellular automata. Uh, what are cellular auto automata? Uh, it's a mathematical model which describes evolving systems. I think that uh, the most famous example uh, in this sense is Conway's Game of Life. They are composed by a grid, initial configurations of life cells, and uh, a set of rules uh, which uh, have to be uh, iterated uh, n times, uh, uh, which are going to decide uh, which uh, cells are going to be born or surviving, and which ones are going to be die instead by isolation or overpopulation. And uh, it, uh, it turns out that there is this very, very special uh, uh, cellular automata rules, uh, which is B3S123345, and it's uh, defined in this way, which uh, produce uh, this uh, masectric uh, output, uh, which is uh, very, very resembling uh, a maze. And uh, if we take this object uh, on the left, which is called F pentomino, and run maybe for uh, 300 iteration uh, this rule, we see that we are able to generate mazes uh, in a procedural way. So how with unicorns as mazes? Um, in order to introduce unicorns as mazes, uh, we are going to talk about our system. What are our system? Uh, those are Landermeyer system. Uh, Landermeyer was a researcher and uh, our grammars uh, generating curves and uh, those cures uh, were meant to simulate uh, live organisms. So in this kind of viewers, uh, you have symbols uh, we are going to, which are going to, uh, let's say, describe the depend strokes uh, on a sheet. And uh, you have a starting string, which is omega, the action, and a set of rules to be recursively and uh, more important, simultaneously applied uh, on this uh, starting string, uh, and which are called the expansion rule. You have, um, maybe a Python uh, example uh, on the right of this kind of, uh, of definition. And for example, in this case, F and G uh, draw a straw toward the current uh, position, and uh, plus is going to turn 90 degrees left, while minus uh, is going to define a turn 90 degrees right. So F plus G is going to draw a stroke toward the current direction, uh, then turn 90 degrees left, draw a stroke to the, toward the the current direction again. And uh, if, for example, applying this kind of uh, rules, you can uh, uh, have these uh, results, uh, which are uh, fractal curves. This is called dragon curves. But now maybe you are asking yourself why this is related to mazes. Uh, well, it turns out that this, there is a very, very uh, special kind of uh, uh, this uh, of Landermeyer system, which defines the space filling curves, which has curves which covers every single point in the space one time. And uh, if you take this curve, which is the PN of curve, and uh, turn it in uh, polar coordinate, then you are going to have this object on the right, which is a universal maze itself, and it's, uh, it turns to be very, very similar to the one that you maybe can find in cathedrals like uh, the one in Lucca, here in Tuscany. And if you just want to have some chaos, uh, it turns out that you also can define maybe multicursal mazes. So you are not going to define a set of fixed rules to produce mazes, but you are choosing randomly and variating them randomly instead. Now on with some more advanced methodologies. Uh, well, let's introduce uh, genetic algorithms. Those are inspired by evolution theories, and uh, they start 
from a population having a, a certain gene set. And then the individuals are evaluated with a fitness function, which uh, needs to be uh, turned down to zero. So it's, uh, it turns to be a manamization problem in the end. During this iteration, only the best individuals are selected, and uh, those, uh, their genes are mixed to produce new individuals. Uh, now, it turns out that with these rules, we can, uh, uh, I, I mean, with those algorithms, sorry, we can rule some basic aspects uh, for binary tree mazes. Uh, for example, the number of horizontal corridors or the number of vertical corridors, or maybe make them equal. Uh, so simulating uh, tossing coin with a probability of 0 0.5. So let's say that uh, it's, uh, in the end, it's just a fancy way to toss a coin to produce uh, uh, binary tree maze. And for example, uh, okay, here I cheated a bit because I altered the gene set just to be able uh, uh, not to make this uh, genetic algorithm to converge too much fast. And uh, if we try to minimize the chromosome count for one, then we have um, the totality of, corridor, of corridors uh, which are horizontal. Uh, on the converse, uh, if we do um, a count on zero, we only have uh, vertical corridors. And if we try to um, maybe uh, minimize the fitness function by, um, with the difference between, between the number of one and zero, we are, uh, we are able to produce a mage with, which have the same number of horizontal and vertical corridors. Uh, okay, so last we are going to tackle the machine learning approach. Um, maybe you know that in the traditional way of programming, the programmers give the algorithm and the machine just execute a number of steps to have a solution. But in machine learning, we have a very, very different approach. The machine sees a number of samples and produces another one from, that, uh, from the one that we give, that we feed uh, to, uh, I mean, to the network. And uh, in this context, we are going to tackle variational autoencoders, uh, GANs, uh, and Pixel CNL++ approach. And something that uh, needs to be noted here is that those are just experiments, uh, and uh, they have been performed uh, on a binary tree generated, generated sets. And uh, some fixings uh, sometimes were made after the generation uh, just to be able to better distinguish black uh, and white pixels. Uh, so first, what is an autoencoder? An autoencoder is a neural network uh, which is trained uh, to reproduce the input uh, as it is by minimizing the loss. So it means that if you feed the number of uh, images, then it will try to reconstruct uh, as best as possible those same images. And uh, this kind of network uh, has some similar uh, generative limitation because uh, um, it just takes those samples and encode them uh, in something which is uh, a, an intermediate space, a latent space we call, and um, it's going to just uh, encode one, uh, one sample after another to a point uh, in that latent space. So once you try to decode those samples uh, from this latent space, you can have a maze back, but you can also have some kind of meaningless output. So uh, what happens is that uh, uh, we we try to use a trick here, and uh, we are going to use something which is variational autoencoder. So it's a kind of network which is trained to produce variations uh, on the input. And the input, again, is compressed and then decompressed, uh, trying to respect this um, minimization loss between the input and the output. But also, uh, a regularization term is included, and this regularization term is needed in order to make this latent space continuous and complete, and that is going to ensure that uh, each and every sample that we decode out of the space is going to produce something that is meaningful. And what is nice is that the output has produced uh, an interpolation of, this, uh, of the inputs that we feed to the network. Now, uh, here is some code, and uh, what is nice to note here is that uh, uh, okay, I use this approach to uh, use the binary tree algorithm just to uh, produce some kind of training set. And uh, I split the training set and the test set in a very peculiar way. Two thirds of samples were uh, assigned to the training set, while one third to the test set. 
regarding the architecture, what is, needs to be noted here is just the introduction of the sampling layer, which is meant to diffuse the mapping uh, of the inputs data point uh, uh, to regularize uh, the latent space. And uh, it's nice to, nice maybe to note how the loss is uh, computed, uh, computed here because uh, it's, um, let's say, the sum of this reconstruction loss plus uh, a very, very, very peculiar loss uh, which, um, let's say, calculate some kind of divergence between uh, the um, distribution that we have to expect on the Latin space and the real distribution that arises from the draining uh, of the network. Uh, okay, so the, to get a new maze, we just get a random point from the lattice space and decode. Uh, here you can see that this process uh, which has been introduced uh, also um, in the function uh, which allowed me to maybe plot uh, results from this latent space. And this is the output. Uh, just a bit of pre-processing, uh, of post-processing has been done here to define better the pixel, uh, or at least to setting a threshold to delete the gray ones. And uh, we can say that, okay, this is uh, a nice output from the network because you see there are loops, and those loops uh, could not be in the training set because uh, binary tree is going always to generate a spanning tree. So loops uh, loop are not uh, present in the training set. Another approach that we can uh, take is maybe to use again, uh, a, a, which is a network which is confused by a generator, which is a faker. And the generator has to get better and better by not being detecting uh, um, faking uh, mazes by the discriminator. And the, the, a discriminator, which is an art critic. So the discriminator has to, has to get better and better to distinguish fake samples from the real ones. And the good generator is capable to be, uh, to be used to produce good mazes, so mazes that uh, are, uh, let's say, does not seem fake. Uh, a very, very serious limitation of this kind of network is, not, uh, is that this kind of network is not always converging, so it's subject to failure and it's very, very difficult to train. The generators just get some random noise and upsample this random noise. And in this sample, I just got explicit uh, the size uh, which are sometimes uh, implicit uh, in the snippet of codes. Uh. And this is the discriminator is just a CNN-based image classifier. So it's going to output uh, uh, two different kind of values, a negative values uh, if uh, it thinks uh, that the generated image is fake, otherwise a positive value if it, think, if it thinks uh, that it's real. And the loss? Uh, is computed as the sum of this real loss and fake loss. Well, the real loss is uh, real as per discriminator. I mean, you are going to get some input from the, from the training data, which are for sure real, and compare uh, which the discriminator uh, thinks are real. And then a fake output, so a, get of, uh, a set of generated output, which are for sure fake, vs what the discriminator think it's fake. So the loss is calculated uh, for both generator and the discriminator at every step, and uh, both the network uh, are updated. And here, the, the only uh, adjustment that did uh, is maybe to, um, to introduce a smaller set for the optimizer in order to avoid the collapse. Because what, <laughs> in the first place, when I first ran the I mean, the, the network, no matter what, uh, what um, sample I took out from the latent space, uh, it was always to produce the same output, and that was not good. That meant that uh, the, network, the network collapsed. And here I reported uh, two uh, tensor board output for the OK network, which uh, was generating good samples, and uh, the one with, which was collapsing uh, and uh, if you look at the, I mean, at the output in the right, you are going to see that there is something wrong because in the literature, you are going to see trends of uh, discriminator loss which are more and more similar to the, the one on the left. So here it is, the learning process of the GAN. <laughs> it, it has been run on 200 epochs for a batch size of 32 samples. And you see that it's, uh, the generator uh, is, uh, is learning uh, about how to, to produce mazes. 
those are some of the outputs, and they are quite okay, I think. And now let's approach the pixel CNN. Uh, in the pixel CNN, the next pixel values is determined by all the previously generated pixel values. And so the probability of the image is going to be the joint distribution to, of, of all pixel. And this, and this computed as the combination of the probability of all its pixels. Okay, now this is a very, very smart way, I think, to, <laughs> to feed the, the sample uh, into the net because they are generated on the fly and not uh, loaded from the disk. And what happens here is that the architecture is just a masked convolutional kernel that only looks at data from previously generated pixels. And um, those architectures is modeled actually with the two uh, CNN because uh, it has to tackle a very common problem in this kind of architecture, which is uh, the blind spot problem. And using two CNN is going to solve this problem. And these are the outputs. What is notable here is I hadn't neither uh, uh, the need to do some kind of post-processing, and those are, uh, I, I think, uh, really, really uh, nice output and really, really credible because they really resemble the one from the training set. So now, just to conclude, some future application that I'd like to be uh, maybe more machine learning architecture. Uh, maybe with conditional output, uh, trying to produce binary tree or maybe uh, VS random walker uh, mazes. Maybe try to explain white function, uh, to explore white function collapse, which is a quantum approach uh, to generation of images, or maybe to explore reaction diffusion systems. Okay, so some resources. Uh, the book which inspires uh, all these uh, research and work which is Mazes for, for, for Programmers from Jimmy Spock, and some repositories that you can maybe check uh, on my account. Uh, okay, it involves really, really uh, quite of a study <laughs> to produce this material, to this material. And thank you, and uh, waiting for your question. What are common metrics to compare different mazes? Uh, okay, maybe you can compare uh, the texture or the space allocation uh, vs the time, the computational time. Uh, the I mean, the the medium length of the corridor. There are a set of metrics that maybe you can consider in order to to produce uh, and to study mazes. Uh, this kind of apparently trivial stud studies often have uh, unexpected application. Do mazes have similar surprising usages? Okay, this is a very, very good question. Uh, this has been performed just uh, for the amusement's sake, <laughs> but I think that uh, maybe it could find some kind of application for gaming or entertainment. I don't know. Uh, are those generation algorithms uh, capable to generate mazes with dimension greater than two? Uh, I didn't try that, uh, but maybe it's possible to pass to voxels <laughs> with some kind of uh, study and application. Uh, some of the examples which were shown as output mazes seem uh, that they don't have a source to target, but how do you validate the output that is really a maze? Uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat? Oh, okay, no, the validation here has been uh, done visually. I mean, I've been expecting the output and just judging uh, how good uh, the outcome could be. Do uh, these algorithms uh, produce also a solution for the maze? I think that, uh, yeah, some of the maze building algorithm comes directly from maze solving one. Uh, can you show again the resources slide? <laughs> okay. Uh, Slido, has, uh, we uh, uh, finished all the questions on Slido. There is any question here in um, 
Hinterrum.